Welcome back, everyone. Lecture 62, we'll do a little more chemistry reviewing, okay? Uh, let's just say a few words about the uh, pH calculations, right, to measure alkalinity or acidity, okay? We know that the, uh, remember, square bracket re refers to concentration. So here we have concentration of hydronium ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions always must be 10 to the minus 14, minus 14, okay? And we define the pH to be minus the log of the concentration of H3O plus, okay? Uh, remember, let me just write this again. Log, I'll write real quick. Log of uh, 10 to the sixth is just six. Log of 10 to the minus six is minus six. Minus log, 10 to the minus 6 is plus 6, right? It's minus, oops, it would be a minus, a minus 6. So it's plus 6. The pHs are always positive. Okie doke. So the rule we need to remember is that the concentration of hydronium ions times the concentration of OH minus is 10 to the minus 14. And a pH is defined with respect to the log minus the log of the hydronium concentration. So very simple. If the hydronium concentration is 10 to the minus 2, minus the log of 10 to the minus 2, the pH is plus 2. Simple, simple, simple. If the hydronium concentration is 10 to the minus 11, minus the log of 10 to the minus 11 is plus 11. Oh my goodness, isn't that great? Okay. All right, what's the next one? Oh, it's not the hydronium concentration. Now I give you the hydroxide concentration. If the hydroxide concentration is 10 to the minus 6, let's go up here. If this is 10 to the minus 6, this must be 10 to the minus 8. So the product would be 10 to the minus 14. So again, if the hydroxide concentration is 10 to the minus 6, the hydronium concentration must be 10 to the minus 8. So the product will give 10 to the minus 14. If the hydronium concentration is 10 to the minus 8, then the pH is minus the log of 10 to the minus 8 is plus 8. Yay! And same thing for hyd hydroxide if it's 10 to the minus 5 then the hydronium concentration must be 10 to the minus 9. The product then gives 10 to the minus 14. So if the hydroxide, uh, the hydro hydroxide concentration is minus 5, the hydronium is minus 10 to the minus 9. Therefore, minus the log of 10 to the minus 9 is plus 9. Wow. Don't you want like 10 of these on an exam? How beautiful would that be? Okay, no tricks. Uh, quick review again. Let's review our formulas for alkanes, CN, H2N plus 2. Alkenes with a double bond, C sub N, H2N, okay, just double. And alkynes, triple bonds, CN, H, H, what? H2N minus 2, okay? So we got that down. So alkyls, always odd, CN, H2N plus one. So let's look. C3, MEP, prop. So it's prop, N, 2N. So this would be propene, propene. C6, H10, what is that? Well, that's N, 2N minus two. So it's an ine. Six is hex. So this would be hex ine. Okay, right away we see an odd number, 11. We know it's an eel. 5 is pent, so that becomes pentyl. N, known, N, 2N, is an ene, double bond, so this is nonene. And finally we have C8, N, 2 times that is 16, plus 2 is 18, so it's an alkane. 8 is oct, so this is octane. Remember, octane is the gasoline in your car, octane. Okie doke. So let's do some naming here. Once again, first thing I do if I'm naming is I look to see if there's single, double, or triple bonds. Here I see all single bonds, so I know it's an alkane or paraffin. 
The second thing I do is I check the longest chain. Now remember, it's not always the obvious one, so I'm going to try to check everything and see what the heck I did. So here I have one, two, three, and four is seven. One, two, and two is four. One, two, three, and four is seven. Okay, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like eight. Two, three, four, eight. Looks like eight. Either way I go, it's going to be eight. Let's see. Let's see. So if I go this way, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four, eight. Oh, wow. Look at that. Two eights. So let's see some names for this. Let's do this, this, this little chain first. Okay. So methyls not attached. Uh, ethyl, uh, uh, uh methyls not attached and what is this mepb butyl okay so let's see how we count this is a methyl that's a butyl that would be carbon five two three four so i'm going to put four butyl okay so that's four that's oh that's my chain so it's five so it's one two three four butyl Three four dimethyl three four dimethyl and what did I say two three four eight octane I think it was wasn't it octane two three four yeah octane okay let me try another path let's try this path now let's go from uh two three four eight four five oh 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 another mistake four five nine look at that you see four five nine so this is definitely not octane it's no name yay see that i made a mistake i didn't really make a mistake i wanted to see if you followed i wanted you to be cursing me out saying no you fool the longest chain is nine okay so look four five nine everybody see that I'm trying to show you that you need to just you got to be very careful you got to count every way every which way and make sure that you get the longest chain all right do not settle all right so this is clearly four five nine absolutely no name cool all right so there's my methyl now look at this look at this this whole thing is the addition two three four nine c4 h9 is my addition okay and my methyl is an addition so remember mepb this is butyl and this is methyl all right so i think we're going to count from here aren't we oh Sorry, this is our chain. So it doesn't matter if we start from this way or we start from this way. It doesn't really matter. For this would be carbon five. So on carbon five is both the methyl and the butyl. So what do I say? I say so we have five butyl, five methyl. No name, not octane. Once again, if I gave this on an exam, I would certainly have octane as one of the choices. Be very careful. Okay, I want I want you to to see that you have to really count and make sure. Okay, and don't follow me. Check everything I do. Okay, I'm gonna erase this now so we have a little more room. Okie doke. So let's name this beast. Okay, let's try to name this beast. All right, let's see. What do we have? Well, we have a triple bond. That's the first thing I see. So I know the ending is going to be Y-N-E, right? It's an ine. Why do I know it's a wine? Because of the triple bond. Remember, the triple or double bond. The triple bond determines how to count. If I look, this triple bond is on this carbon and this carbon. So this is going to be carbon one. That's going to be carbon two, no matter what. This is a two-something ine. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like seven, right? This looks like heptine. And it looks like a two heptine. Why is it two heptine? Because the triple bond is on carbon two. So what did I just say with it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to darken this a little. Okay, so you could see what my chain is. Looks like a methyl, and it looks like a methyl. So that's carbon three. This would be carbon four. So it looks like a four, four dimethyl heptine. Two heptine, sorry, two heptine. Yeah, tell me where the triple bond is. So once again, if I'm doing this problem on an exam, trying to work it out quickly, first thing is anything without a Y-N-E ending because of the triple bond, those choices cannot be. The second thing is, and you have to be very careful, this one was more straightforward, you need to count the longest chain and then label it two heptine. So right away, hopefully there's not five choices that say two heptine. So right away you've eliminated some of the choices. The next thing to do is just see once you have your longest chain what the additions are. And here it's clear that it's dimethyl, both on carbon four. Excuse me. Okay. Uh some benzene structures, some ring structures. Look, oh what a mess this is, right? All right, this is pretty easy. We have one, two, three, four additions. We've got bromine, bromine. What is this? Ethyl? What's C eight H seventeen? Do you know? Right? It's odd, so it's an eel. Eight is oct, so this is octeal. Octeal. And again, B comes before E comes before O. So we're going to number this this way. One, two, dibromo. One, two, the, so that makes this carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, three ethyl, three ethyl. This would be carbon four. So that would be carbon five octyl benzene. Let me just double check because, you know, one, two, dibromo on carbon three is an ethyl C2H5 on carbon four. On carbon five is my octyl. That looks right. That was pretty easy. OK. Let's look at this little beast. All right. There's a bunch of names, as you know. Remember this? Remember this? With a CH3, it's a, that's methyl, benzene, and you know it's also toluene. Okay, so let's first call this not toluene. Let's just count it. So we have TCC. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to count counterclockwise with my chlorines. One, two, dichloro. That look right? One, two, dichloro. That's carbon three, carbon four. Then it would be four methyl benzene. Okay. All right. Let's try to name it as a toluene because, again, this can show up on an exam as toluene. If I call this compound toluene, it's this methyl group that defines it to be toluene. And what I mean by that is by defining it to be toluene, this methyl now is on carbon number one. So we have a dichloro toluene, right? But where is the chlorine? Well, let's see. If I count this way, it would be two, three, four. If I go the other way, it would be two, three, it would be four, five. So I need to count clockwise. The methyl makes this toluene. So this would be carbon one. So that's carbon two. So this is three, four, dichloro, toluene. One, two, dichloro, four, methyl, benzene, or 
3,4-dichlorotoluene. Notice we don't use ortho, meta, or para in this compound. Why? Because there's more than two substitutions. When I say substitutions, what are we substituting for? We're substituting for hydrogens, okay? And we're doing very simple compounds, right? We're, we're not organic chemists here. We're not pretending to be an organic chemist. We're just trying to learn a couple simple rules, okay? So again, we could have stuff like this attached, right, to other benzenes. You could see how complicated this stuff could get, all right? I want you to appreciate the complexity of organic chemistry. We are not getting complex, okay? Maybe in the future, you'll take an organic chemistry class and you'll love it, okay? Uh, uh, let's do one more of these. I like putting, I like putting the methyl in because this gives us more names, okay? <laughs> All right, I don't know what I just made, but whatever, okay? So let's let's identify everything first, okay? This we know is a hexyl. Of course, we know methyl. Three is MEP, this is a propyl. And 10 is dechyl, okay? So let's see, D... H, M, and P, D, H, M, and P. So this is going to be carbon one. Okay, let's see which way to count to get the hexyl. And then I need the methyl. So I think this way is going to be shorter. One, two, three, four hexyl. I'm going clockwise now. So if that's carbon one, Two, three, four, five, three methyl, and then five propyl. Benzene. Okay. Take this crap out. Okay, let's see what we have also. So suppose, here we go. Suppose now I use this as my definition of toluene. This then becomes carbon one, doesn't it? So now we have to go this way. This carbon one, that would be two, three. Okay, so we have a three decyl. Four, five, six hexyl, four propyl, and now I define this to be toluene. Okay, so three decyl, six hexyl, four propyl, toluene, or equivalently, one decal, four hexyl, three methyl, five propyl benzene. Okay. I let's see if I can do something not too bad. How's this looking?
Woof! Oh, my hand is getting tired. Okay, sorry for that. All right, let's see how we did. <laughs> Can we make out what this is? So let's find the longest chain. I think I did it. Um, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six. 10 2 3 4 5 6 7 looks like 10 is going to be my highest all single bonds right so it's decane so let me do this so this is my decane decane i'm going to write that here decane okay so what do we have if this is my chain Ethyl, methyl, methyl. Wow, this stuff's not part of my chain. One, two, three, so it's C3H7 is MEP propyl. And oi, 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 what is this crap? C3H7, another propyl. So I have ethyl, methyl, and propyl added on. Ethyl comes first. I think I'm counting from here. So that's carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, carbon six. So let's put the ethyl in first. E comes before everything. Looks like it's on carbon four. So I'm going to write four ethyl. Okay. So I took care of that. We say methyl comes next, right? So there's a methyl on carbon three, a methyl on carbon four. So what did I just say? Three, four dimethyl, three, four dimethyl and now we have our propyls right so we're going here 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 five is a propyl and six is a propyl five six dipropyl five six dipropyl you check my answer because again i i don't see so well when i'm close up So my answer for this molecule was 4-ethyl, 3-4-dimethyl, 5-6-dipropyl, decane, decane, okay? Once again, if I was doing this on an exam, I notice there's all single bonds. The ending is A-N-E. It's an alkane, paraffin, right? The next thing we do is we try to find the longest chain like I did. I think once I find decane, I know that's the longest chain, okay? And then what I do is I circle all the additions, the ethyls or methyls or whatever I have, right? uh and propyls and see where they are see which way to count and the rest is rock and roll not so bad okay so i cannot give super complicated things on an exam obviously but if you understand the idea follow the certain rules remember the uh, hierarchy of what to look for what i do is first i look for a single double triple bond that tells me the ending the next thing i do is i try to find the longest chain checking every which way okay every which way because you never know and then finally um i see which way i have to count and then i look at what whatever is not part of my chain is an addition and I see where they are and I number them and I name my molecule. All right, that's it. Good luck. Be well. Take care of yourself. Ciao.